Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do a Friday Reads video where I catch up on the weekend reading and bookish things and all that. We'll get to the Friday Reads portion in a little bit. There is a lot to report. I finished two books this week, which is exciting, and I am very eager to talk about both of them. Uh, the bookish world has been a little bit quiet this week. The only thing I want to talk about before we get to that is just generally uh, what's been going on. I uh, was getting a little bit sick in my last Friday Reads video. I got sick this past week, and unfortunately, it was COVID. So that's been exciting. I guess the way things are going, it's felt, it feels like it was bound to happen at some point. Unfortunately, Joel's job requires him to work with frontline workers very closely. And two weeks ago, they sent him to a store in Wyoming that was understaffed, which is not unusual. A lot of stores are having problems uh, keeping staff employed. There's a lot of turnover and they're having problems finding new people to replace the ones who leave. But when he got there, it turned out that this particular store was understaffed because like everybody had COVID. And we kind of knew at that point that we had, that we had dodged a couple of bullets uh, before, and this one was probably going to be the one that got us. And sure enough, Joel got home Friday and by Sunday was starting to feel sick. So we went and got PCR tests, and uh, they originally told us that it was going to take a, a day or th anywhere from one to three days to get results. I did get tested at the same time, just in case, and it ended up taking sick. We didn't get our results for a week. <laughs> so, and when they did, mine was negative, Joel's was positive. We did eventually manage to track down the home tests during the week, and uh, mine was inconclusive. You know, you're supposed to get those two pink lines, and I got a pink line and a pink cloud. And I'm assuming that means positive, but it definitely wasn't a line. It was just a little blur. So, whatever. Uh, long story short, that's the way the week has been going. You, you may notice I only published one other video this week, and somebody even commented on that video because they noticed I wasn't feeling well. And I that actually is the one day this week I felt well enough to film a video, and I fully admit it was not my best work. I don't know if this is going to be my best work. I've been like losing my voice all day. So I've been mainlining tea <laughs> with a lot of honey all day long and it's still coming in and out. So we'll see how this goes. I am a coffee drinker, by the way, and I've had a lot of tea with honey this week. The real thing I want to talk about with this is just that, you know, it's been a miserable week. I felt really sick. Not to the point of like hospitalization, but I think the, the only point with that is that I am someone who is not in an age bracket where COVID is supposed to be like a heavy concern. I have no chronic health conditions other than migraines or anything like that. So on a technical level, I'm supposed to be low risk for COVID. And I had a miserable, miserable week. I want to yell at anybody who has ever said something like, it is just like the flu. I would take the flu <laughs> 10 times over what happened this past week and the way I felt this past week. A lot of people have been getting COVID lately. People who are fully vaccinated, fully boosted. I'm fully vaccinated and boosted. And a lot of people who are in that same situation and who have managed to avoid COVID so far have been getting it. And I've heard a lot of them say that they had really mild cases. Mine didn't feel, if mine was mild, <laughs> and if this is how it feels after being fully vaccinated and boosted, I would hate to experience what the real thing would have been like. So I guess the point for that is be careful out there. <laughs> Wear a mask if you can stay home, stay home, because it's spreading really fast. And if you live in a state like I do, where hospitals were already overwhelmed in December and then Omicron came along and they, you know, they were just starting to get better and then Omicron came along, be careful about that as well because our PCR tests, like I said, took a week to get back to us. My test ended up becoming negative because it was too early in the curve for me to get a positive result. And Joel's did test positive, but nobody reached out to him. Nobody called him. Nobody tried. Nobody at any point tried to reach out with guidance on what to do. I actually got a phone call off of my negative test before his results were available. And 
I tried to explain the situation to the person and they basically said, oh yeah, you probably have COVID. Well, thanks. Well, and tried to hang up and I had to try to ask for guidance. And you know, not that uh, we kind of know the guidance. And the person basically just repeated the CDC rules five days. Uh, and then you can go out with masks as long as your symptoms have gone away. By the way, my sim Joel's symptoms were not gone after five days. My symptoms were not gone after five days. I'm going to be 10 days after symptoms first appeared on Sunday. And my symptoms are still not gone. <laughs> so maybe they'll be gone by Sunday. Fingers crossed. But, you know, the point with that just being at no point during the week was anybody checking in on us from like an official standpoint did anybody give us guidance or tell us what we should do what should we should look out for and i at no point needed hospitalization or anything like that but i felt miserable all week and it is scary to know that if something were to go wrong you've basically been left on your own and i don't fault the healthcare providers i know they're overwhelmed and overworked and understaffed and all of that i guess the point for anyone out there is be careful because it's not good to know that if you were in a situation where you did need help, you might not be able to get it. That's scary. It's a scary feeling. So that's been the week, basically. Thankfully, Joel was really only sick for two days and then he hasn't been 100% since then, but he started to get better and he was uh, feeling mostly better by the time I started to get sick. Uh, unfortunately, he has had to take care of me and the two dogs all week. So big kudos to Joel. He's had a really crazy week. And uh, that's just, that's what our week has been. I'm going to take a sip of tea. Bear with me a second. And, you know, it's also one of those things you really can't predict how your body is going to react to something. I've heard people say that they had really mild cases. I know Brian at Bookish thankfully had mild cases and his wife had a mild case uh, recently. That's not what happened to me. And again, I'm not someone who is supposed to be considered high risk for COVID. So just, again, be careful out there. You don't want to have to go through what I went through. And again, what I went through could have been so much worse. So just be careful out there. It's gotten scary again. Hopefully this means we'll be, uh, I don't know what the immunity is. Once you've had it, is that 90 days, something like that? But uh, hopefully that means we'll be okay at least for 90 days. And hopefully there won't be any other variants coming out. It's just, it's a mess out there. And that's all I will say about that. I am starting to feel a little bit better other than my voice coming and going. So we probably are going to take the Christmas tree down this week. We did not take it down last week. I didn't want to say this in last week's Friday Reads video, but I was I was starting to feel sick on that day and I kind of anticipated that I wasn't going to feel well enough to take the tree down and that is exactly what happened. So hopefully we will feel well enough to do it today but it was nice having it this week because I spent a lot of time napping on this couch with a puppy at my feet and staring at the tree which was a nice way to make myself happy. So we're going to take it easy this weekend. Like I said I'm not going to be 10 days since my first symptoms until Sunday, and I'm probably not gonna feel comfortable getting out of the house for another couple of days after that. But I did manage to get a lot of reading done, not on audio. I've been listening to the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, and I didn't make any progress in it this week. That's not a comment on the quality of the book. I was enjoying the book. It's just that I really tore through the physical book that I was reading, or that ebook that I was reading, e-galley that I was reading, and the physical book that I followed that up with. And now I'm going to be looking to get back to the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. I think the other thing that was getting in the way of me listening to an audiobook this week is that Joel got me turned on to this game on my phone that is, it's a logic game. And it's a lot of fun. But you can't listen to like a book while you're doing it. Because it requires you to really actively think and read, so you can't pay attention to a book. It just doesn't work. So that's the other reason I didn't make any progress on my audiobook. I did finish Young Mungo by Douglas Stewart, which I had said I was going to start last Friday. I'm not going to say a whole lot about this because I'm thinking I'm going to do an individual review. And part of why I'm going to do an individual review is that 
I don't feel like I can talk about what I thought about the book without talking about something really big that happens in the middle of it. I will say I had gotten swept up in the writing in the beginning and I, that continued. The, the, something that happens in the middle kind of really, it's shocking. It jarred me out of the book a little bit. And I still don't quite know how I feel about it. I will say I didn't like it as much as Shuggy Bane in the end. I did like it. And what I can say here, without spoilers, is that there are two different storylines in the book. One set a few months before the other one. And I think you could completely edit one of those storylines out and it would be a better book. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I will think about ways to do a review because the thing I can't quite decide is if I want the full review to be spoiler or if I want it to be unspoiler. What I might do is do a full review that is not a spoiler but write something on my blog which I have kind of abandoned at this point because it's just too much work. I might write something on there that would be a spoiler review. So you can watch the video without spoilers but then you can refer to that if you would like them. So because it's just one of those things that's impossible to talk about what you are wrestling with without talking about the book. I think a lot of people are going to like it, especially if you did like Shuggy Bane. I just have complicated feelings about it in the end, which is a little disappointing, but I'm not fully disappointed in the book. Like, I, if you recall last year, I had a section in my worst books of the year for most disappointing read. Like, I'm not going to put Young Mungo in that. It's not even a contender for that right now. It's a good book. I just think it could have been better. And I think a lot of the points that came across in that storyline that I think you could edit out are in the other storyline and not, not so heavy handed. And I'll leave it at that. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who is really looking forward to it because I know a lot of people are very much anticipating Young Mungo and I need to take another sip of tea. <laughs> there we go. And we will leave Young Mungo at that. I'll have more thoughts next week. I'm probably going to do that approach where there's a no spoiler video review that will link to something that has spoilers. Let's talk about the other book that I finished this week because I really liked this book. And I can talk about it without spoiling anything. It is Agatha of Little Neon by Claire Luchette. This is actually something that a commenter, Kurt Anderson, had mentioned to me at some point last year. And I had completely forgotten about until NPR's Book of the Day podcast did an interview with Scott Simon and Claire Luchette where they talked about this book. And that immediately grabbed my attention. And I put a hold on it at the library. And here it is. And then I remembered that... I had heard about this from Kurt Anderson because at some point last year he said that it was a big week for lesbian nuns because of this and The Matrix. And it just so happened I had both The Matrix, not The Matrix, just Matrix by Lauren Groff and this. And Jamie's coming to say hello. And I didn't read them in the same week, but it's been a big month for lesbian nuns for me. Shouldn't they all be big months for lesbian nuns? And that's not really a spoiler, by the way. In the beginning, she mentions wrestling with her sexuality. So Agatha is a nun in Lackawanna. She is in an order with three other nun novitiates, and their parish is running into financial trouble and ultimately closes. They have been running a daycare, and the numbers from the daycare have been slowly dwindling over time until the point where they have no children. So she and the other nuns are sent to Woonsocket, in Rhode Island, where they will begin running a halfway house instead. And the halfway house is nicknamed Little Neon because it is painted this kind of violent lime green color. And what ends up happening is that after they make this move from Lackawanna to Woonsocket, Agatha, it's interesting because in the beginning, she's talking about how the sisters function so well together and they are, are all like different organs of the same body. And she refers to herself as the eyes. And that is kind of exactly her function within the group. She is much more observant than they are. She is the one who's really able to see things for what they are. But what happens when they get to Woonsocket is she ends up taking a job at the high school because they need a geometry teacher. She's not particularly good at, at geometry, but she studies up. And she starts getting outside of 
the parish and away from the other three nuns, which has not really happened to her up to this point. And she is someone who has been very insecure and somebody who was trying to run from her own sexuality, as I said, which is mentioned in the beginning. So she sort of lost her identity in the church, but now she's getting time to herself and she's able to see things and see the world and see her sisters because then she'll come back from a hard day at school and find out what they've been up to during the day. And she suddenly for the first time starts to see ways in which the things that they are doing are not necessarily beneficial to a whole lot of people or they're just kind of wasting time in certain ways. And she starts to see things about how the church is particularly unable to help the people who are residents of the halfway house because, of course, they are not trained to do that job. They're almost being set up for failure in that regard from the beginning. But when the people in the halfway house are struggling with something, whether it be depression or addiction or anything like that, they don't have, the nuns that is, any real world experience that they can relate to them with or that they can base advice off of. All they can do is offer meaningless platitudes that are not going to be helpful to these people. Like they, There's a point where somebody is depressed and people just start quoting Bible verses at them that are almost chastising the person for being depressed and not for not being grateful for what they have. And it's really interesting. I really love this book a lot. It has a very complicated relationship to the church and the church's stance on women's rights and what women are allowed to do. But it, in a way that you can extrapolate into the rest of society as well. And it talks about the financial collapse and things like that. And it talks about grief very heavily because Agatha is a person who's carrying a lot of grief with her. And again, a lot of that ties back to the financial collapse. And it also talks about the financial collapse and the difficulties that these churches and parishes are having compared to the exorbitant amounts of money that are being paid out to silence victims of sexual assault and sexual abuse that were suffered at the hands of the church and the sort of mismanagement that the men of the church had been doing and the mismanagement of funds. It's a very interesting book. I really love it a lot. It's a very subtle book. It almost feels like not much is happening at certain points. However, it all really, really builds. This series of small moments has this big emotional punch in the end. And I would definitely, definitely recommend it to you. I would say similar to Zori, which is a book where it seems like there's just a small grouping of events, but it all really adds together to this beautiful mosaic um, that you can take a step back from once you finish and really deeply, profoundly appreciate. So I would absolutely recommend Agatha of Little Neon by Claire Luchette. I returned my other library books, uh, or rather Joel did, because he's at a point where he can leave the house now after we quarantined them in the car for a couple of days. So I finished this this morning and we will quarantine it in the car <laughs> for a day or two and then return it to the library. So none of my germs will be on the book when it goes back. But I definitely, absolutely recommend this book if you are so inclined. In terms of what is next, I'm going to get back to the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. I had been planning when I finished that book, which is going to take a while because it's a long book, and I had only made tiny headway into it. But I had been thinking that I would do the audio of Razorblade Tears after that. I'm now pivoting because someone recommended a book of short stories that is written by a trans woman called Dreams of a Woman. And it was something that I was thinking about doing for the Montana Book Company's Reading Challenge for 2022. And I actually managed to get an audio copy of the book on NetGalley. So once I finished The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, which again, is going to be a while, pieces, or sorry, Dreams of a Woman is probably the audio that I will be doing next. So that's what's on the horizon for audio. My plans, now that I've finished Agatha of Little Neon, are to dive back into NetGalley, and I'm going to pick up The Boy with a Bird in His Chest by Emmy Lund, which was one of my most anticipated reads of 2022. I will put a link to that video in the description box down below if you have not seen it already. I'm really excited for that one. NetGalley says it's coming out in April or May, but everywhere else says it's coming out in February. So I want to try to get to that one now 
since it will be coming out soon. I'm really excited about that. And I am going to try to make progress on it this week because starting in February, I have a read of Beloved planned written by Toni Morrison. And I am really looking forward to that, which also means I really need to get over my cold and finish that Gone with the Wind video because Beloved will be the next book for my Pulitzer Prize project. And it is also going to be for the Montana Book Company's reading challenge for 2022 because there is a prompt for a classic piece of literature written by a black author and beloved is going to be that for me so those are my reading plans that's what's been going on it's what i've read if you have thoughts about any of this i would love to hear it in the comment section down below i'd love to hear what you've been up to what you've been reading and loving if you have thoughts about i have not heard much about agatha of little neon other than kurt anderson so if you've read this and have thoughts, I would love to hear in the comment section down below. Let me know if you've read Young Mungo. I'd love I'd be very interested in what you have to say about it. Let me know. Not spoilers in the comment section, but reach out somehow and uh just let me know. I would be very curious. And as always, I really appreciate your time. I'm going to get back to my tea. And until next time, happy reading.